Uh, hello. Hello there. What you doing, Psycho? Well, that depends. What are you doing? Well, I'm actually making a YouTube video engaging in that trope of where you want to make an argument, but you just don't want to talk to a camera, so you want to do a kind of like a split screen where you have somebody, you know, standing as the straw man, you know, the bad guy, and that you get to beat down with your superior verbal arguments to make your point look good and the superior one. But because I neither have the technology, the time, the expertise, or even the desire to actually do it properly, I'm just standing here holding one of my son's toys, talking to it like a complete idiot. And it gives me something to do besides just look at the camera and my own ugly face. Hmm, I see. Hmm, interesting. But shouldn't you get off camera? I mean, isn't that part of the trope too? Yeah, if I cared enough, but yeah, I would do this, but then that might look awkward too. Besides, it's not like anybody actually thinks you're talking. I mean, you're a metal and plastic toy. So, yeah, so, shall we get down with, so, shall we get this abortion on the way? Okay. Anyway, have you heard that they are doing a She-Ra reboot? Yeah. And doesn't that upset you as a fan? Well, I mean, Masters of the Universe was one of, was my third favorite toy line property IP as a kid. I mean, you know, I, I love the monsters. I love Skeletor and Hordak and, you know, and, you know, I kind of enjoy the fantasy of it. I mean, so, you know, I like She-Ra, you know, I mean, she was... He man's sister, so even though the toy line was for girls, I mean, I had her and I had Catra. Catra was cute. So, <laughs> I mean, and they fought the evil horde, which was part of the, you know, mainline Masters of the Universe collection, so, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I mean, you know, I haven't really thought about it that much. I mean,. I knew they rebooted He-Man there during the early 2000s, but I never watched the show. And you know, you know, I, I've, you know, I grew up. I got, I went, I got a job. I went to school, dropped out of school, um, got engaged, got married, bought a house. I mean, so yeah, it's not something I actually really thought about or or anything, but yeah. Rebooting she -Ra? Yes. Okay, I mean, shoot. They've rebooted everything else from the 80s. I mean, the re uh, rebooting, relaunching, remaking you guys, so... I don't have a problem with that. Have you actually seen it, though? The animation style? Doesn't that bother you? Not really, I mean... Um, it's in line with modern-day cartoons. It, you know, Gumball, um, that one about the hero, um, Star vs. the Force of Evil, um, yeah, so, I mean, it has, it shares a common animation aesthetic. Um, anime, I mean, most animes look exactly the same, as a matter of fact, that's one of the selling points, it's like, you know, you know, you watch one anime and the end, and it's it's the same as every other. You know, I mean, Vampire Hunter D has the same visual aesthetic as Robotech, and so I don't see why. You know, you know, Shira having new Shira having the same aesthetic as you know many uh, you know what is that the cow art style they call it, having the same animation style as you know, other, you know, popular cartoons of the day is, you know, anything to get worked up over. But have you seen the way she's strong? They're destroying the sacred feminine. Mm, not really, I mean, um, 
in the lore, she's only about 16 years old, and if you go back and look at the She-Ra cartoon I grew up on, she looks 25. I mean, at least now she kind of looks like the age she's supposed to be, so... I mean, it's... I don't have a problem with that. It, I don't... I mean, I don't see the reason why every female character has to have, you know, Dolly Parton tits, you know, you know and, and, and a J-Lo ass. I, I, especially since it's aimed not at people my age, but at kids. I mean, I, so yeah, I don't have a problem with it. But they ray swap some of the ones, and some of the ones they made fat. Doesn't that bother you? Doesn't the fact that some of them are gay bother you? N no. I mean, let's face it, the population of the United States has been diversifying for decades. In a few years, whites will no longer have the absolute majority of the population. They'll still be the plur plurality that plurality of the population, but not the absolute majority. Um, so having a cartoon show that more accurate, accurately reflects the population at large, both in gender and race and body shape, I don't see a problem with that. Um, you know, it, I mean, shoot, if TV shows, whether they be live action or cartoons, were really representative of the population, most of, most of the characters on there would look like, well, me. Because the majority of the population is overweight to some degree or, or another. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see why that's a big deal. I mean, these are fictional characters. Um, they don't literally exist. So, deciding that, you know, one character is now black or one character is now, you know, chubby or, you know, gay, I, I don't see a problem with that. See, that's the problem. They're with you SJWs. You are ruining everything. Ruining everything! Well, I don't see how not taking offense at a remake of a cartoon show you haven't thought about in over 30 years to have a cast that's more representative of the actual population is being an SJW. Um, but, but those were established characters. If they wanted different characters, they should come up with new ones. And like I said, the characters don't exist. And usually I find that to be a straw man argument, because even when they do come up with new characters, people still complain. I take Riri Williams. People say that Iron Man get race and gender swapped. Well, the last time I checked, Tony Stark was still a cisgendered white man. Um, so, he's, he's still the same. It's just a different person donned the Iron Man suit for a while. Uh, who just ha happened to be a, a black girl. You know, Tony wasn't raced or gender swapped. At least not recently. He was briefly back in, I think, the late 90s, early 2000s, when Ultron made him a, a chick, but I wasn't reading comments on that. I was reading comics back then, and only just found out about that through doing, you know, you know, research and watching YouTube videos on comics. Which I gotta say, I'm kind of glad I got out of comics, because they get really, really weird <laughs> in that interim between, you know, my teen years and when my kids started reading them. So, yeah, but... No, I don't... So, yeah, I don't understand, especially when the argument itself has not been borne out by facts. I mean, the people get upset when characters are suddenly swapped from, you know, gay to straight or white to black or male to female are the same ones who still scream when new characters are added. So... I don't find that argument convincing. But what about stories? They should just be concentrating on good stories. Oh, good story. I mean, that's... You know, everybody has a different idea on what's a good story. Um, you know, for some people, just seeing, you know, muscular, you know, Olympic-ready 
white bodies going around, you know, being all heroic. I mean, that's kind of boring. Um, you know, people like to see themselves, you know, being represented. Um, why do you think Black Panther did so well? Um, and if representation wasn't that important, why do so many white men scream their heads off when, you know, they're not being representative? I mean, the vast majority of all characters in comic books and cartoons are still white, they're still straight, and predominantly male. So, but yet they still freak out whenever a character is introduced that isn't any of those things. So, I mean, obviously they know how important representation is. Uh, one of the things I remember, uh, comedian D.L. Hughley was saying after um, President Obama got elected, and he was talking about being at the inauguration, and he said for the first time in his life he held an American flag. Um, not because he didn't want to, but because he thought he wasn't allowed to. That growing up, growing up black in America, he always felt like this wasn't really his country. And it wasn't until Obama got elected that he actually did feel like, you know what, I am an American, this is my country too. I mean, while we might scoff at the idea of the importance of representation, um, I had a friend who openly, you know, laughed at an article I shared with him about how part of white privilege is seeing yourself represented on, on screen. But, you know, representation does matter. Feeling like you're part of, you know, the society you belong in matters. And for a lot of groups, um, like black people, all people of color, gays, lesbians, trans peoples, atheists, agnostics, hi, um, when you don't see yourself, you, you suddenly take it as a subtle message that you're not, you're not welcome here, you don't belong here. In fact, look at members of my own social group, the white working class. One of our biggest complaints is that we're not on TV, and if we're on TV, it's as, you know, the dumb hick, you know. It's either A, Mississippi Rising, or Deliverance. Those are our two big representation blocks, and we're much more than that. So, yeah, representation is important, and, you know, understanding that shouldn't be that controversial. But it's desecration! It's desecration! They're ruining your childhood! My childhood was ruined by being bullied, okay? My childhood ended decades ago, alright? I'm middle age. I mean, that, that, that's completely done. And in fact, I still, they're still there. I can go on eBay and buy toys from when I was a kid. I can go on Amazon, eBay, and buy DVDs of the cartoons I watched as a kid. Uh, my childhood had happened. Until somebody invents a time machine and can alter time, it's going to stay the way it was. And the relics and artifacts from my childhood are still there. Um, but people remaking stuff that I grew up with for a new generation, I mean, that I don't see a problem with that. I mean, think about it. If we never had remakes... We wouldn't have gotten John Carpenter's The Thing, which completely blows the old thing out of the water. Which most people from my age agree. And you know who doesn't agree with that? Most people from the generation prior, who thought the original thing was better than the remake. Okay? People tend to think remakes are bad when they're remakes of things that were around when they were a kid. Because we fetishize our own past. Okay? We, we see it as sacrosanct, as I said in another video. Yeah, you are becoming quite redundant. Yeah, I know. But anyway, nobody watches these things anyhow, so whatever. But, I mean, think about it. Think about when we grew up, how we talked. It's like how we would debate who was the better Dracula, Bella Lugosi or Christopher Lee. If remakes were never were, were allowed to happen, it would just be 
whoever played Nosferatu in the first Dracula movie. Well, that was Nosferatu, not Dracula. Well, they changed the name, so they want to get in trouble with the Bram Stoker estate. But they still got sued. Yeah, okay. But still, weren't you the one who went on Facebook and said that Michael Bay skull fucked your childhood after seeing the first Transformers? Yeah, I did. And you know what? I was wrong. I was completely wrong, and I regret posting it. I, I mean, that doesn't change the fact I think it was an abomination of a movie, that it was eye cancer, but the fact is, Michael Bay's a shitty director. Great camera work, dude knows how to get a shot, but as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, he sucks ass. The dude can't tell a story for shit. Okay? So... I should have gone and said, Michael Bay made a really bad movie, and I thought it sucked. But, my childhood was unaffected. And, you know, people change, people grow. You know, there is a lot of things I've changed my position on it through the years. Um, but, you know, that's part of life, you know. You're supposed to change and grow and mature. You're not supposed to be stuck at who you were when you were 16 for the rest of your life. Or 26. Or 36. Hmm. So what you were saying is that you don't care that a production company has remade something from your past without taking your thoughts or, or feelings into consideration. No, because ultimately it's not mine. The IP belongs to Mattel. Ha! Huh. Mattel's not even making toys for it, which shows that even they know it sucks. Well, Mattel hasn't done anything with Masters of the Universe for decades. Um, even though there's Masters of the Universe toys out there, they're all licensed to other parties. Um, Mattel has nothing to do with it. In fact, the only thing that Mattel has with Masters of the Universe is owners of the IP. Everything else is licensed out. The toys, the cartoons, everything. They have no direct involvement in that. Uh, whether that changes or not, it might. Um, Monster High, they just canceled that. They lost the rights to um, uh, to produce DC toys, I, I saw on the news. I mean, the only thing they really got going right now is the perennial Barbie and Hot Wheels, and even that, I think, is only because, you know, people my age and older, they have relatives and co-workers and friends who have kids, and they don't know what to buy them, so it's like, is it a boy? Eh, Hot Wheels. Is it a girl? Eh, Barbie. You know, whether or not kids actually like Barbies or Hot Wheels, I have no clue. Um, my daughter has a couple... That, but she doesn't really play with them that much. My my son used used to love Hot Wheels and play with them quite a bit, but now he barely plays with them. But like I said, for the generation at large, I have no idea. So the fact that Mattel isn't making them, I mean, they don't make any Masters of the Universe toys. So, you know, but the toys I've seen, like on YouTube videos and reviews, they look kind of nice, but... You know, I don't I don't have Netflix, so I'm not going to watch the series. My kids aren't going to see the series, so I don't think they're going to be interested in the toys. So, I mean, this is one thing that just doesn't concern me. You know, I have real issues. You know, real things I have to think about. Remakes and, you know, cartoons, that, that's nothing. Which is exactly why you did an entire video talking to a toy about it. Well, that's, yeah, well, it's not really about that. It's about making a point about, for people who are my age, that we need to learn to let go, okay? We're not kids anymore, all right? We're middle-aged, and eventually we're going to be senior citizens, and eventually we're going to be dead, okay? Culture changes, all right? Slowly but surely over time, all right? We were hunters and gatherers, then we are agrarian. Then we had where everything was made by hand and lived in small villages. Then the Industrial Revolution happened, and now we're in the computer age. 
eventually one day, humanity will either go extinct or evolve into another species. But nothing lasts forever. And the more you try to lock it down and seal it up, so it does last forever, the more you're going to fail, and the more you're going to look like a douche. And getting online, and making videos, complaining, and, you know, railing, and putting, especially, you know, saying SJW this, SJW that, you know. Like, at this point, if, I, if I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see uh, something with, a, a video with the title with SJW in the title. I, I I know it's nothing to even check out. That is completely idiotic. That you now forget it. Whatever. <laughs> it's not even to be taken seriously. So yeah, you know what? Things are going to change, and there's going to be new. And the new Shira is here. Some people might like it. Some people might don't. All right, I've seen people YouTube videos from people who really like the show. I've seen YouTube videos from people who really hate the show. Some people think it's a you know, a wonderful sign of diversity and inclusion and you know, there are a lot of people in the LGBT community who really like it, who see it as great representation. There are other people who think that it still relies on the white messiah trope that the main character is still a blonde haired blue eyed be it woman but still blonde haired blue eyed white person who feel that it fails at LGBTQ um, representation because nothing's really blatant uh, the relationship between Catra and Adora is, they say is nothing more than queer baiting uh, Bo's two fathers aren't even depicted on camera. So, I mean, people like it, people don't like it. That's for them to decide. But to categor categorically say it sucks and it should never be done and because, you know, the 80s show was perfect, which the 80s show, when you get down to it, was a cash grab. A cash grab, the last cash grab of a dying franchise, which, which was on its way out, and was nothing more than a 30-minute um, infomercial for a toy line. Okay? Let's be honest. So, yeah, to say anything that just right off the bat, to go out of your way to nitpick and look for things because you don't like the fact that, you know, it has people who don't look like you, that it has people of color, that it has, you know, overweight people, and by overweight, I mean overweight for Hollywood standards. Um, you know, it's like, it's like when my daughter and I talk, she asks me what one of my favorite superheroes is. I say Squirrel Girl, and I say I love Squirrel Girl because she's, you know, one of the, f the few chubby superheroes. And of course, I always have to part, you know, qualify that by saying she's chubby by superhero standards, you know, by comic book standards, by real world standards, she's still thin, but, you know, it's a step in the right direction. You know, so, just saying that you categorize Hastelin because, like I said, it has people of color, overweight people, gay people, and people who just aren't cishet white people, it's ridiculous, or that it's being remade at all, because somehow it was perfect in the past it is ridiculous I mean if you don't like it because you don't like the writing or because you know you just don't like the cow art style or whatnot that's one thing but yeah especially when you're someone my age it's like don't you have anything better to think about don't you have anything better to worry about more important okay you know I'm worried about my financial situation. I'm worried about my kids being safe. Uh, I'm worried about, you know, because of our insane gun laws, am I going to get a call saying that my kid's school was involved in a school shooting? You know, I'm worried about the, uh, you know, upcoming 2020 election and if we're going to get the orange Cheeto out of office. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, have fun. Enjoy things, but... 
put everything in perspective. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Hold on. And this. Oh, God damn it.